Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's lecture is about n-dimensional vectors. Um, in the main course um, of uh, on, on this website, the main course was called Mass for Teens. Um, I did present vectors in two and three dimensions. So right now we are in the Mass Plus category. So um, uh, I will talk about n-dimensional vectors. Uh, and present a couple of very, very simple uh, problems. Now, this lecture is part of the course Math Plus and Problems, presented on Unizor.com. Prerequisite course was the one which I have just mentioned, Math uh, for Teens. The website has some other courses as well, like Physics for Teens, for example, Relativity for All. Um, the website is totally free, there are no advertisements, Sign-in is not necessary unless you are part of the group, you need supervisor, etc., etc. And in that case, all I need is just a, a, a ID. Basically, if you are self-studying, you, you don't need uh, to sign in. So it has lectures, and every lecture has uh, notes. They are presented on the website just next to each other. So it's very beneficial if you will watch the lecture, not from somewhere you found it, somewhere on YouTube, let's say, or wherever, but go straight to unizor.com because you will see this benefit of having both lecture and uh, textual material. Textual material is like a textbook, basically, very detailed. Um, well, that's it, so let's start. Now, um, I will very, very briefly repeat what we know about vectors from the previous material which I presented uh, in, the, uh, in the theoretical course Mass for Teens. We were talking about uh, vectors in two dimensions and, and, and three dimensional cases. Well, basically what it is is, well, one dimensional case. Uh, that's when uh, every number, let's call it R, any real number has a corresponding, and this is coordinate, lay, coordinate line, so you have zero, you have uh, number one, and you have a direction. So if you have any real number, you correspond a point, let's say A, which has a distance equals to absolute value of R, and whether it's positive or negative, then A goes to, to the right of the uh, to the positive direction from the zero or to the negative. Now, at the same time, you can uh, associate with the same number R vector from zero to, to A, this vector. Okay, what's wrong with my... This vector. Or any other vector on the same line which has exactly the same magnitude and, and direction. Now, what's important about vector, and vector algebra in particular, it has zero vector, um, which is basically a vector of zero lengths. It has addition, uh, well, regular addition. If you take, for instance, a vector and uh, another vector, R and S, you just put one and another and combine them together. Uh, it has um, what multiplication by a factor, uh, let's call it f, which means you're just making longer um, the same vector. Now, if you go to a two-dimensional case, then two-dimensional case is basically a representation of a pair of real numbers. So one real number is presented on the line, a pair of real numbers is presented on two-dimensional space. So you have two perpendicular to each other coordinate lines, you have unit here and unit there. And again, a point with coordinates R1, R2, which means R1 would be projection on the abscissa, R2 is projection on ordinate uh, axis. Sometimes it's X and Y, but just, just a name. So that point would be a representation of this pair of numbers on the plane. At the same time, you can say that this vector is also a representation. What's important is that projections again on both axes are the same as absolute value of R1 and R2, 
and direction is such that the corresponding points are going to the plus or minus depending on the uh, sign of R1 or 2. Again, we have a no vector, we have addition of two vectors, let's say this one and this one will give you this. And again, with vectors it's important uh, the magnitude and direction. So this vector and let's say this vector, this and this, if they have the same magnitude in the same direction, they are representing the same pair of numbers, R1 or 2. So important is just the length of the projection on one and the length of projection on another and the direction. So that's why this vector can be attached to the end point of this vector and that's their sum. Analogously you can multiply it by some factor which means just stretching uh, and um, what else? What's important in two-dimensional case and three-dimensional as well, we have a scalar product. If R and S are two vectors, which means R is actually R1, R2, and S is S1, S2. So vector R represents a pair R1, R2, vector S represents S1, S2. Then their scalar product R, S, or that product sometimes, uh, is by definition R1, R2 plus S1, S2. These are in coordinates. Sometimes you are um, assigning two vectors of unit lengths i and j on both axes, and in this case, using uh, operations of um, addition and stretching, we can stretch vector i, which is unit vector, to R1. We can stretch j to R2 and say that the vector r is a combination of R1 times i vector. So unit vector is stretched by the length of i plus R2 j. So that's a representation of the vector as a linear combination of unit vectors on the uh, uh, on both axes. Now exactly the same is in three-dimensional case and quite frankly I, I, I don't want to, 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 to waste the time actually explaining it. It's exactly the same. You have zero, you have addition in three-dimensional space, you have multiplication by a factor which is stretching and you have a scalar product. Um, now, in three-dimensional case, we, we also have a vector product, but we are not talking about this. It has no equivalency in n-dimensional space. So far, everything I was talking here does have an equivalency in n-dimensional space. Okay, fine. So, now let's talk about n-dimensions. So, what is n-dimensional space? If one-dimensional space is a single number, real number, two-dimensional space is a pair, in three-dimensional space we have a triplet of real numbers. Obviously in n-dimensional case we have R1, R2, etc., Rn, a set of n real numbers. This is uh, basically uh, something which we can put in equivalence to an n-dimensional vector. You see in one and two and three dimensions we basically have two different things, algebraic representation as a number and geometric representation as a vector in, in space, basically, you can, you can feel it, basically, right? Uh, now, in, in n-dimensional case, you, you don't really imagine it in any way. So let's forget about geometric representation, let's concentrate only on algebraic re representation. But we will assume that the same kind of operations which exist in one, two, and three dimensional cases, we will just transfer to n dimensional case, and that's it. So, first of all, we have a null vector. Now, what is a null vector? Null vector is 0, 0, 0, blah, 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 0, and zeros. Okay? Now, we have a, uh, up an, uh, a, a, an operation of addition. Now, what is operation of addition? So, let's say you have one vector and you have another vector, S1, Sn. Now, exactly the same as in one and two and three dimensional cases, 
when we when we add this vector to this projection of this vector is added to projection of this vector and this is projection on this axis of the result same thing in in uh, uh, y-axis in ordinate so projections are actually added together but r1 r2 etc they are projections uh, on, on the corresponding axis in uh, and the in dimensional space so r s1 s2 so the operation of addition basically is r plus s is r1 plus s1 uh, r2 plus s2 Uh, etc. Rn plus Sn and n. So again, this is a set of n numbers, this is set of n numbers, and this is set of n numbers. So sum of corresponding components represents uh, each component of the sum of vectors. Absolutely the same as in one, two, three dimensional cases. What else? Stretching. Now, what is a stretching? Again, in case of um, geometric representation, when we stretch, let's say, let's say double, we double projection on this axis and double projection on that axis. So basically, it's exactly the same thing. If you multiply factor by r, this is you multiply this factor on each dimension, on each component. and that would be a new n-dimensional vector. So again, n-dimensional vector is by definition is just a sequence of n real numbers. That's it. Now this sequence is called zero. This sequence is called multiplication. This is se se sequence is called addition. And uh, there is a, again, scalar product. If you uh, multiply one by another using the rules of scalar product, it's exactly the same as in this case. It's R1 S1 plus R2 S2, etc., plus R N S N. So scalar product is a single real number. So this is a set of numbers. This is a set of numbers. But their scalar product is one real number which is calculated using exactly the same formula as in this particular case. Now what else can we actually transfer from the um, two and three dimensional case? Remember what sca uh, scalar product actually is defined. How is it defined? Now uh, let me just remind you. Now, let's say it's a two-dimensional case, and you have two vectors, r and s. Now, their scalar product is basically uh, modulus or mag magnitude of r times magnitude of s times cosine of angle between them, right? So here you have this uh, 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 r, and this is s, and this is phi. Now, from here, cosine phi is equal to uh, Rs scalar product divided by product of their magnitudes. And magnitude is scalar product of, uh, of vector by itself, actually, right? Because the cosine of angle between R and R is zero, so the uh, cosine of zero is uh, is one, so r times r, r times r, would be uh, uh, magn magnitude of r times magnitude of one times times one. So this is uh, an obvious uh, uh, equation. So if you will get rid of the two, you will have to put square root here, right? which is basically r1 times r1 plus r2 times r2, right? That's what, that's what their scalar product of 
are by, by, by itself. Now, same thing here, exactly. We are not doing anything new. We are saying that this is a scalar product. Now, if we will divide scalar product by um, square root of r times r and square root of s times s, again, scalar product and scalar product, this is actually uh, magnitude of r and this is magnitude of s same thing as is here so we can call this expression cosine of angle between two vectors and dimensional vectors so angle a concept of angle can be actually presented even in n-dimensional cases well okay why not if we can do it we can do it okay so that was basically a repetition uh, kind of um, one to one basically to whatever we had with two and three dimensional cases let me just introduce something slightly newer with n dimensional cases which we did not really touch much um, when we were talking about um, two and three dimensional vectors now with n dimensional vectors there is a one very important concept this concept was kind of assumed as known in two three-dimensional cases. With n-dimensional cases I would like to basically explain it a little bit more detail. Okay, so it's the concept of linear dependency and linear independency of vectors. Now, it's, um, it's very close to um, uh, solving linear uh, equations, system of linear equations, basically. So again, there is a vector equivalent of system of linear equations. All right, so let's do it this way. First of all, if you have certain number of vectors in n-dimensional space, let's say R1, it's a vector. So it has a component 1, 2, 3, 4, n. It has another vector, 2, again, the same number of components, etc and k vector certain number of vector k vectors each one of them is an n-dimensional vector which means it has n components now what is uh, called uh, a linear dependency well linear dependency is the following if you have certain coefficients q1 q2 qk such that you add them together and you will get zero where not not all q i equals to zero so there is some non-zero q i mean obviously if everything is zero it will be zero so that's not interesting case what's interesting case is if there are certain coefficients such that this would be a zero and let me just put this zero means null vector which means again this is addition which means it's by component what is the comp what is the first component of this the first component is q1 r1 plus q2 uh, r1 over the second of uh, the second vector plus etc plus uh, first component of the case vector equals to zero number zero and then you have the same thing for the second component r2 1 plus q2 r2 2 plus etc plus q k r k uh, second component equals to zero etc up to uh, the very last uh, sorry q1 up to the very last end components plus q2 r2 end component plus q k r k end component equals to zero that's what that's what this vector equation means if you will expand it to every component of vectors r1, r2, etc., rk. 
So these are two equivalent things. So if this is uh, true for some Qs where not all of them are equal to zero, or equivalently, if the whole system is satisfied for certain Q1, Q2, Qk, not all of them is equal to zero, then you call these vectors R1, R2, Rk linearly dependent. Now, what are linearly independent? Well, obviously those who are not linearly dependent. And my first problem is, are there linearly independent uh, vectors in n-dimensional space? Well, the answer is, now you can think about this, you can pause the video and you can think about this, but um, it's a very simple thing. Vector 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, etc. up to 0, 0, 1. So 1 goes on the first place for the first vector, on the second place for the second vector, etc., etc., and on the nth place in the nth vector. Uh, now, obviously, these vectors, so this is R1, this is R2, etc., this is Rn. So I can actually make up to n linearly independent vectors in n-dimensional space. Now, why these are linearly independent? Well, for a very simple reason. Uh, let's multiply this by Q, this is by Q2, and this is by Qn, uh, in, N. in this case k is equal to n, the same number of vectors and number of dimensions. What will be? Here you will be having q1, 0, 0, 0, q1, 0, uh, sorry, q1, q1, 0, 0, 0. This would be 0, q2, and, and the rest is 0, etc., and 0, 0, Qn, right? And if I'm saying that these are all zeros, it means that all Qs are supposed to be equal to zero, right? And I'm assuming that there is uh, none, all of them should be equal to zero, then it will be linearly dependent. So if I assume that they are linearly dependent, then with some coefficient Q, then in, it it's immediately follows that these all coefficients must be equal to zero. So that's a contradiction, which means these uh, um, vectors are linearly independent. What do they represent in our two- and three-dimensional case? Well, these are unit vectors. This was along the abscissa, this is along ordinate in two-dimensional case, right? This point and this point. This point is 1, 0, this point is 0, 1. So these vectors are unit vectors. So these are linearly independent vectors, n of them in n-dimensional space. So they exist, n um, linearly independent vectors in n-dimensional space. Now, if uh, I'm asking for anything less than n, well, that's obviously true too. You just cut it down. So if you stop somewhere there, that would be actually also linearly independent because you will have again q, 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 etc. So that was my first problem. Now, how to represent any vector in n-dimensional space as a linear combination of these vectors? Well, again, that's kind of a trivial problem, and the way how we solve it is exactly the same how we solve the problem in two and three dimensions. Okay, there's nothing new about it. So this linear, linear independence is basically like presenting the vector in coordinates. So let's say we have vector R, which has component R1, R2, Rn. This is vector R. Well, obviously I can represent it as R1 times I 1, where I1 is 1, 0, 0, 0. I2 is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, etc. 
by n is 0, 0, 1, plus r2, i2, plus etc., plus rn, i, i, n, vector. This is the vectors, and these are numbers, components of vector r. So if I multiply r1 by i1, I will have r1 as the first component, and then zeros. This would be r2 as the second component, and everything is zeros, etc. And if I will add them together, I will have r1 in the first, r2 in the second, and r in the second. So that's my second problem, basically. So any vector in n-dimensional space, which is a set of n real numbers, can be represented as a sum of, uh, as a linear combination of unit vectors. These are unit vectors. You can call each component a coordinate if you wish. So R1 is a coordinate uh, along the first axis, R2 is coordinate along the second axis. So we don't have any, num uh, any names like abscissa or genate uh, and ordinate in like two-dimensional cases. We don't have these names if, if you have n coordinates. So I call them one first, uh, second, third, etc. So these are coordinates. These are coordinates. And if you wish, you can call it even projections on the corresponding axis. Again, I'm using geometric language, but it means exactly the same as in two-dimensional case, which we can present basically in front of our eyes, right? So these are components. These are projections on the corresponding axis, if you wish. This is the unit vectors along the first axis. This is the unit vector along the second axis, etc. Now, and the third problem is slightly different, but very much similar. Um, now, we have represented each vector as a linear combination of these linearly independent, as we have proven, vectors. Now, my question is, if you have any other set of linearly independent um, vectors, let's say, you have vector r1, etc., rn, uh, and they are linearly independent. Can you represent any vector v, v1, vn? Now, this is r1 first, r1 second, etc., r1 n's, right? This is R1. R, Rn is correspondingly Rn first coordinate, Rn second, etc. Rn n. So these are n vectors, n sets of n uh, numbers, and they are linearly independent. Can you represent this as a linear combination of these? Well, again, let's just put it in writing as system of coordinates um, which are combined into certain equations. So V1 must be a combination of certain Q1 R11 plus Q2 R2 R2 1 plus etc. plus qn rn 1. Same thing with second, same thing with third, and the n components would be exactly similar. It would be r1 n's component plus q2 r2 n's component plus etc. qn rn n's component. Now what is this? It's system of and linear equations, right? These are all numbers now. R1, R1, R1 1, 2, 1, they're all components, which means real numbers. So this is the linear um, uh, equations, system of linear equations. And what are the unknowns? Can we find these guys, Q1, Qn? So it's n equations, linear equations with n unknowns. Now, from the system of equations with n unknowns, um, I did mention in the main course that basically um, the R11, R21, etc., up to Rnn, it's a matrix. And this matrix, you can represent it as 
V is equal to matrix R. I'll use uh, uh, two vertical lines times um, times vector Q. Let's put it as a vector. So Q1, etc., QN can be represented as a vector. Well, the column vector. V1, Vn is also a column vector. And um, R is a matrix of R11, R21, etc., etc. So this will be a multiplication of matrix by unknown vector getting some known results. And again, in the theory of linear equations, I was talking about determinant of this matrix. If determinant is not equal to zero, matrix is inversible. So you can always multiply this matrix on an inverted matrix, R minus one times V. That would be equal to my, and this is a solution. So basically you have to invert the matrix. To invert the matrix, you need determinant not being equal to zero. I don't remember I was proving this because it's kind of a high step, but I did mention that this is important. So, and that's exactly the same as linear combination in this case. So linear combination, linear independence of R's, that's exactly the same as, um, as ability to invert the matrix in this particular case. So then when Q is not equal to zero, obviously. So that's very, very important stuff. This linear combination, linear independence, and um, um, uh, determinant of these uh, of this matrix of R coefficients. So that was my third problem, in, and I perfectly understand that I did not prove it exactly because again, proof is part of the linear algebra course, which is kind of university stuff. But just remember, and we actually did exemplify this in my main course, course on uh, mass for teens, that for two and three dimensional cases, that's actually the case. I was talking about determinant of the matrix in two dimensional and three dimensional cases. Well, there is a determinant for n dimensional matrix and that's what it is, it comes to it. Well, that's it. I recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. They're very detailed. And basically that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.